very thing that you're allowing to cause trouble in your heart is preventing the thing that you've been praying for, the thing that you've been, you've been seeking God for, to happen in the natural. God wants to come through for you. He wants to show up for you. He wants to come through for you like this. However, it's that thing in your heart that's preventing it. <laughs>6.37 in the morning and I just felt like God kind of woke me up out of my sleep just to give you this message. So before we get into this message, um, I just want to say a prayer and then we're going to get right into it. So if we could just close our eyes and bow our heads and let's get into the word. Dear Lord God, I just thank you so much for just waking me up this morning because I know you have such a great word for your people, God. And I just pray that you give them the ears and the eyes to hear and to see everything that you're saying to them. Allow them to get everything out of this word that you want them to hear and to know, God. May nothing be about me, but may it be all about you. May you get all the glory. May you get all the honor. Oh, God, use me as your vessel to get through to your people, to speak to your people. God, give me a word that would encourage somebody today, that would help somebody, God that would save somebody's life, that would save a soul today, God. I decree and declare that so many lives are being saved, Lord God. So many people are just growing closer to you and seeking you and drawing closer to you, oh God. So many people are turning away from their wicked ways and their sin and choosing you today. God, I just come against all Satan's plots, plans, and schemes concerning their life and their ministry, Lord God. I come against distraction. God, I come against mental illness oh god god i come against anything that's not of you oh god and i just pray for deliverance i just for pray for peace in their mind peace in their heart peace in their soul oh god use them god god you said in the last days that you will pour out your spirit and i decree and declare that you are pouring out your spirit and your young men and your young women are dreaming dreams and that we are seeking you and we're spreading your word oh god May this word land on solid ground, being a blessing in my life as well as other people's life, oh God. Have your way. Let your will be done, oh God. Let your kingdom come, oh God. Have your way. May not be about us. May it not be about us, Lord God. Allow us to take heed to your warning. Allow us to take heed to everything that you are saying to us in this season, God. Whatever you're doing in our season, whatever you're doing to try to get our attention, oh God. I pray that we will surrender all to you and we will hear you, God, and we will take heed. I pray that we will just take heed, oh God, to your warning, God. Wake us up, Jesus. Wake us up, God. Wake us up. Wake us up. In Jesus' name, amen. So, if we can turn to John 14, I'm going to be reading verse 1. So, it reads, Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. And I find it very interesting that he started off this chapter with saying, don't let your heart be troubled. And when I read that, it kind of made me question like, why would our hearts be troubled? What is causing our hearts to be troubled? What is causing us to worry? What is, it, what is causing us to doubt? What is causing us to fear? Continue reading to John 14, 17. It says, He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it, because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Why wouldn't we be able to recognize 
God and the Holy Spirit. So he starts off this verse by saying, don't let your heart be troubled. And then he goes down to verse 17 and says, the world could not receive him because they're not looking for him. And I just want to ask you this question. What is causing you to not be able to recognize God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? What have you allowed to enter your heart, your mind, your soul to cause you to not even want to recognize the person who created you, the person who sent his only and begotten son to die on a cross for you, the person who died on a cross for you, and the person who left this earth and sent advocate on your behalf to be with you? What is causing you not to recognize him? What have you allowed in your heart to be troubled? What are you allowing? Are you allowing disappointment? Are you allowing daddy issues? Are you allowing what happened in your childhood? Are you allowing what's going on in your situation right now to happen? If I can be honest, as I read this, the one thing that I realized that has caused me so much trouble in my heart is disappointment towards God. I have disappointment towards God because I feel like God has not come through for me the way that I feel he should come through for me. And that has caused me to not want to seek him to not even want to hear any words or read my Bible, I have allowed that to cause me so much trouble in my heart. And not only is that affecting me, it's affecting everyone around me. Because I can't pour out to people what I don't have. If I don't believe God will show up for me, how can I preach this word to you all? How can I preach it to my five-year-old nephew? that God will come through for you. And I don't even believe that. If we can turn to Hebrews 11. If you guys want to know anything about faith, Hebrews is the best book in the Bible to read. If you're, a child, if you're experiencing trouble in your faith and believing in God, it's the best book. Okay, so we're going to start at verse 1. Faith is the confidence that we that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Though their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that we can that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cable did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval of his gift. Although Abel is long dead. He still speaks to us by his examples of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him, God, must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So I just gave you a little testimony as to why my heart is being troubled. God's word said that he will reward those who sincerely seek him. If you don't have faith, 
how can you seek God? How can you believe that God will come through for you? It is by faith that we believe that he died on a cross for our sins. But if we don't have faith, do we even believe he even died on a cross for our sins? What is causing your heart to be troubled? What is so bad in your life right now that you cannot die to your flesh that you cannot open up your ears and open up your eyes to seek God and to believe in who he is. In Hebrews 11, it says, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. It wasn't formed at our command. So which means we cannot manifest things we cannot think that things are just going to happen if we're not right with God. And I know most of you are like, well, I've been praying. I've been seeking God. I've been believing. I have faith. I have everything that you're reading right now. But nothing seems to happen to me. Nothing good ever happens to me. It just seems like so much bad stuff is just coming. And it's continuously happening to me. Why is it happening to me? Why is God allowing this to happen to me? And I want to explain something to you, to you, as to how things work when it comes to God. We have two realms. We have the natural, which we live in, and then we have the spiritual. The things that you've been praying for, the things that you've been hoping for, the things that you've been seeking God earnestly for, has already occurred in the spiritual realm. However, it hasn't occurred in the natural. And the only way the spiritual realm can allow it to happen in the natural realm is if you seek him sincerely, if you believe, if you have faith. And I know that you're saying, you're already doing that. But here's the thing, the very thing that you're allowing to cause trouble in your heart is preventing the thing that you've been praying for, the thing that you've been, you've been seeking God for, to happen in the natural. God wants to come through for you. He wants to show for you. He wants to come through for you like this. However, it's that thing in your heart that's preventing you. And you may say, well, I don't have anything in my heart. We all have heart issues. We're all dealing and battle with things in our heart that is affecting how we think, it's affecting how we speak, and it's affecting how we treat others. Like I said before, the disappointment that I have towards God is affecting people around me. If you were to ask any of my close relatives, they would say I'm the meanest person in the world. I can be the sweetest person. However, I'm a no-nonsense type of person. And that's because I have so much stuff in my heart that has occurred in my life that has caused my heart to be troubled and has caused me to take my anger out on the people that I love the most. The people that has been there for me the most when nobody else been there for me. So if I'm doing that to my family members and the people in my life in the natural, imagine what I'm doing to my heavenly father. Do you not understand that when you hurt, God hurts. You think he's just up in heaven like, ha ha, yay, he, he's hurting, she's hurting. Let me continue to put more hurt on them. No, God says, I would never put more on them than they can bear. So you wanna know why you're going through so much? You wanna know why God is putting so much on you? Because he knows you can handle it. He trusts you enough to say, I'm going to put this on my child because I know they will handle it. And I know that when they come out of this situation, 
oh, they're going to be a whole completely different person. They're not even going to look the same. They're not going to act the same. Everybody around them going to be seeking me because they could handle everything that I threw at them. Do you want to know the person who experienced the most pain in the Bible? Job. Job had everything. And because God trusted him, God put so much on him because God trusted him. He knew that if I take away everything he loved, he would never curse me and he would never give up on me. How amazing is that, that God can trust you with so much and he has so much faith in you that he will never hurt you. And you may think like, this stuff that I'm going through, it's unbearable. Nobody should ever have to experience it. You're not the only person who's experiencing it. You have 64 books in the Bible of people going through some of the things that you're going through right now. I promise you, everything that you're going through, God already provided you a way out through his word. But if you're not seeking him with a sincere heart, if you're saying, I'm just going to seek God so he can just come through for me, God is not a DJ who's going to continue to play your request and continue to allow the life that's going to hurt you. He's a good, good, good father. You may think you want those things, but obviously if God is not allowing you to have it, it's not good for you. God knows every little detail about you one of my favorite verses in the bible is jeremiah 29 and 11 and it says i know the plans that i have for you plans to prosper you and not to hurt you and not to harm you so whatever you're praying for whatever you're hoping god for and whatever is causing resentment and hurt towards it trouble in your heart towards god it's not in god's plan it's not in God's plan for it to happen right now. And you have to sit back and realize that not my will, but God's will be done. It's not about you. It's not about you. When you stand before God on judgment day and you say, God, why didn't you come through for me? Why didn't you answer my prayers? And God says, I've been answering your prayers since you was little. All I needed for you to do was to believe and have faith with a sincere heart and to seek me that it will happen. Wow, that's all? Do you not realize the world is asking you to do so much worse than that? And God only asks you for that little bit? Do you not realize that when you're not obedient and doing what God tells you to do, blood is on your hands and that when you do go before God on judgment day you're going to say you did all these things and God's going to say you work of iniquity you didn't do that for me you did it for yourself you wanted me to come through for you so you can post it on Instagram so you can post it on YouTube so you can be flashy and tell everybody oh God got me this car God got me this man. God got me this girl. And I'm married because of God. And God didn't even tell you to get in that relationship. He didn't even tell you to have that car. But you just wanted to show off. We need to be making choices and decisions now that will help others. And that when we leave this earth and stand before God, we can hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servants. You can come on in. Hell is so real. It's real. It's real and it's hot. And do you know that Satan wants to drag you there? He wants to take you to hell with him. In God's word, it says that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy, he wants to kill, and he wants to steal everything pertaining to your purpose that God has given you. So you want to know what's, what's causing that trouble? It's Satan. And the thing is, once you give him an inch, 
he's going to take them out. If he can allow trouble to creep into your heart, he's got you trapped. He's got you trapped. But you know what God's word says? Perfect love casts out fear. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't allow whatever you're going through in your life cause you to take your eyes off of God and who he is. He's a good father. He will come through for you. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but God has already come through for you. You got to be, you got to believe, you got to pray, you got to fast, you got to seek God. I challenge you, get off your phone, get off of what, shut down everything that's distracting you and to seek God, allow him to pour into you. What is he telling you to do in this season? Do you not know that we're living in chaos right now and God is relying on you to minister to your sisters and brothers in Christ? Imagine if I would have allowed the disappointment to tear me down. I wouldn't even be making these videos. I wouldn't. But because I believe that God died on the cross for my sins and I believe that he will come through for me. I don't care what, what to, when or how, just as long as he come through for me. Just as long as he changed my situation. You gotta pray and believe for better days. Even if you can't see it, God says, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. Even if you have not seen the change in your life, you better believe and have faith that it will eventually change. You better speak the word over your life. You better pray some worship music and you better praise God like you never before, like your victory is happening right now. Don't allow Satan to drag you to hell. Don't allow him to tear you down. Don't allow him to let trouble creep into your heart because once you get into that place, it's so hard to get out. It's so hard. But you have to believe that God loved you. He created you with purpose and he will never fail you. We as a generation have to believe that God will never fail us. Have to believe that there's so much people going through way worse than what you're going through. And your situation could be really bad. But God loves you and he cares for you. And he's allowing you to go through whatever you're going through right now to strengthen you. So you can share that testimony to others. It's so important when we share testimonies to others because it encourages people. It uplifts people. You can say, I've been through this in the store and you, God tell you to speak to somebody. And you share your testimony with that person and it stops them from committing suicide. It stops them from committing murder. It helps them get over forgiveness. It helps them get over hurt. It helps them get over the things that are causing them trouble. Stop soaking in your mess. Get up, believe, and have faith and seek God. When Jesus lived on this earth and he was experiencing trouble, he knew how to get away from the world and to speak and talk to his Heavenly Father. Talk to God. He, he can handle all of that. He, want, he designed us to have a relationship with him. He can handle the hurt. He can handle the pain. But he just wants you to talk to him. He misses you. I don't know who this is for. But God misses his child. He misses the person he created. The person he formed out of his mother's womb. He misses you. He loves you. And he cares for you. And he wants to come through for you. But you cannot allow the things that are causing you trouble in your life to cause you to question God's character, to cause you to take your eyes off God, to cause you to not believe who he is. He died on a cross for your sin. If he don't do nothing else, that right there was enough because we're, we were destined for hell. We're supposed to be going to hell right now, but he died to his flesh and said, I want my people to be in heaven with me. I want my people to live for me. So I'm going to die on a cross for everyone's sin. How amazing is that? And then God sent his only begotten son into this world to die on a cross for your sins. And the thing is, when Jesus lived on this earth, he did not, he did not do one sin. He was a man without sin. 
and he died on a cross for you. He didn't have to do that. He could have said, no, God, I'm, I don't want to do that. And I'm sure he probably had conversations with God saying that. But God, but Jesus said, if this is not your will, God, take it away from me. Did, did Jesus, did God take it away from Jesus? No, he went through that because God knew he could trust Jesus to carry out his plan. So God is trusting you right now. He's trusting you. And either you're going to do what God tell you to do and to keep going, or either you're not going to do it. It's up to you. Either you're going to allow that very thing that's troubling your heart to affect your relationship with God, or either you're going to do what he tells you to do. It's up to you. Choose who you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve God, or either you're going to serve the devil. Either you're going to allow worry to creep into your heart, or either you're going to have faith. What are you going to do? I'm just speaking it to y'all. I'm speaking it to myself too. We all need to be better, do better. We all need to repent. We all need to get right with God because time is running out. We don't have time. We don't have 2,000 years anymore to get right with God. We need to be doing it now because tomorrow is not promised. Life is but a vapor. It can be here today and gone tomorrow. Don't allow the things in your heart to cause you trouble. Don't allow it to cause you pain. Have faith and believe. And also repent for allowing that trouble to creep into your heart because that's going to affect your relationship with God. How can you love somebody and you don't even trust them and believe them? And you have trouble in your heart and unforgiveness in your heart. You have to deal with that, get to the root of that issue. Go seek a counselor. I recommend counseling. Go If you don't run, do counseling. Go to a spiritual advisor. Go to somebody who you trust. But you need to get to the root of the issue. You need to deal with your issues. Not sweep it under a rug because it's a big issue. We as people, we think we don't need to go to counseling. We think we got it. We think, oh, I'm just going to read my Bible and pray. That's awesome. Read your Bible and pray. However, you need somebody else to talk to. If you're experiencing so much hurt and your pain and it's causing you resentment towards God and others, you need to be seeking other counsel. And it's okay. Don't be ashamed to go seek other counsel. God can use that person to minister to you and to bless you and to cause healing and deliverance in your heart. And that way you can do the same thing for somebody else. Be who God has called you to be today and do not allow trouble to creep into your heart. Have faith and believe with everything in you. Hold tight to God's word that he will come through for you. Also, if you do not know God and you want to get right with God, please repeat after me. Dear Lord God, I am a sinner. Dear Lord God, I just ask for your forgiveness and I repent of each and every sin that I have committed. I believe that you died on a cross for my sin and that you sent your only begotten son to die on a cross for my sins, God. I believe that you will come through for me. I believe that you will never leave me, fail me, or abandon me, oh God. God, whatever trouble, whatever hurt, whatever pain, whatever resentment that I have allowed in my life, in my heart, please remove it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know you. I want to love you. God, I want to be your vessel. I want you to use me. God, I want to be a blessing to other people's life, God. Help me. Jesus, I need you. I cannot make it in this world without you. God, I know that is sin in this world, oh God. But I know that you are bigger than sin, and I know that sin cannot tie you down. And that you are awesome, God, and you will come through for me. You will turn my situation around. You will show for me your own time, God. You don't even work inside of time. You are so perfect, and all your ways are so perfect, God. God, you knew me was when I was in my mother's womb. God, you know the plans that you have for me, plans to prosper me and not to hurt me. Oh, God, show me your way and let your will be done in my life, oh, God. God, I come humbly before your throne, asking you to heal me, asking you to deliver me, asking me, asking you to set me free from all the weight and all the pain that's weighing me down. Jesus, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you. 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 God, 
help me right now. God, I come humbly and sincerely to your throne as your daughter, as your son, asking you to help me stay on the right path. Help me to use wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to do what you have called me to do. God, you created me to do your will, to do your purpose, oh God. Please help me, oh Lord. I love you and I worship you and I praise you and I thank you so much that the victory is won, that Satan, Satan is defeated, God. That he would not kill, destroy, or steal anything in my life. Thank you for giving me the power to trample over scorpions and lions. Thank you for placing the enemy underneath my foot and prepare me a table in the presence of my enemy, oh God. Thank you that the victory is won. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, please email us at moyefamily15 at gmail.com. We would love to just continue to encourage you, send you a Bible, and just continue to pray for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly pray that you enjoyed watching. Also, check out our other videos. Also, if you like this video, give this video a big fat thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below saying that it encouraged you. And also, subscribe to our channel. We love you guys and we thank you guys so, so much. Make sure you guys continue to pray. Seek God. Go seek counsel. And allow God to use you. Don't let your heart to be troubled. We'll see you guys in our next video. Bye.